with Dr. Eula M. Nelson, Senior Pastor of Bible Way Healing Assembly in Rochester, New York. This ministry offers you victory living through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The powerfully anointed rich word of God is ministered boldly as Dr. Nelson declares, have faith in God. Let's listen attentively as we go into the service already in progress. To our friends in Radio Land, to those of you that have gathered here at Bible Way Healing Assembly, and it is everything that the name implies. At 4831 West Henrietta Road here in Henrietta, New York. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. No one has to suffer and others are being healed. No one has to die before that time because life can be beautiful. Take Jesus for your partner. Jesus makes all of your plans so much larger. We're delighted, we thank God for the opportunity of being on WDKX. We thank the Lord for this medium, amen, where we can reach the public and somebody else ought to be clapping their hands because we are reaching people for Christ. This is the Lord's ministry. We want you to know whether you are in your home, your place of business, whether you're in a hospital, a nursing home, maybe you're in prison, or wherever you are. I want you to know that God said in this day that he has made, you are supposed to rejoice. You are supposed to rejoice. Well, you said, Bishop Nelson, I, I'm, I'm aching. Bishop Nelson, I have some serious concerns. But he said today you ought to rejoice. Now if God tell you to rejoice, come on. You better put your hands together, open up your mouth. Feel it. Feel it. You better rejoice. You better be rejoicing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Billy. I want you to know that our God is a God of power. He said, have faith in God. And I want you to know that everyone can exercise faith. In God. Everyone has natural faith. But everyone does not have biblical faith. Biblical faith is based on God's word. Have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two. 22. Whatsoever thing you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. Believe that you receive them. And you shall have them. Believe that you would see them and you shall have them. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, human faith is attributes of humanity. God has given everyone a measure of faith. On Friday night, I had demonstrated, we flipped the lights. We know those lights were going to come back on because we paid our genie. Yeah, natural faith. We demonstrated sitting in chairs. I don't think anyone pressed on the chair before you sat in here. You knew the chair was going to hold you up. That's natural faith. Ah! But when my husband was about to die in the hospital, and the doctors given him up, he passed out, lost consciousness. When Satan tried to make me think he was gone, I stood on the word of God. And I believe what I said. Hallelujah. It's called say it faith. And I spoke it in the name of Jesus. Believe it in the name of Jesus. And where they couldn't revive him, God did. Oh, I just want to tell you that's about 13, 14 years ago, maybe 15. And he's still alive. Oh, I say he's still alive. <laughs> Biblical faith is based on the word of God. In your case, right now, right now, if you will believe, 
it is possible. For all things are possible to them that believe that all things are possible. When you believe God, you say what God said. You acted. And then you do as Second Peter said. Hallelujah. When he said that you add to that faith. Virtue. Then add virtue to your knowledge of the word of God. Then knowledge to temperance. And then temperance to patience. And then patience to godliness. And godliness to brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness. Charity. And if these things be in you while you're speaking. <laughs> the Bible said you shall not. Be barren. That means you will not be without what you ask God for. You will not be empty. You will not be barren. But he said that you will be fruitful in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You'll be able to walk up here and testify. We got a testimony right now. Here's a mother whose son fell. I believe I got the message that he fell on the job. Fell outside. Come on here. And testify, but somebody tell me when the doctor somebody said he had two tumors on the brain, three, yeah. But did he call you? You mean he can talk? But tumors on the brain? Well, really, tell the people that. I thank God on yesterday. My daughter-in-law had called me, and she said, "Mom," she said, I "Has some news to tell you." You don't know when I just called you. The first one I called, she said I was on. I was at the airport leaving, going to out of town to a class reunion, and I got a call from Ty. Tyrone said, "Talani, I don't feel good. Something's going on." And that's all he said. He just passed. He passed out. So she didn't know what was going on. So she just called to his coworkers at the job. Cause she said she knew he was at the job, and he was saying he was walking down New York. In New York City, left his job going to see another see a client, and uh, he just called her because it felt funny, and so she's rushed and called the coworkers, and she didn't hear anything else until they told him they had to rush him to the hospital. So she left the airport and went on to the hospital in New York City, and she told me she said they took tests and stuff, and they seen a a, a leader in one small leader on his brain, and then they took an MRI and seen three more and everything so when she called me yesterday she said mom she said they're getting ready to release him i said thank you jesus and she said because they released him because she said that he's been in new york and his doctor's in jersey is where they live and they want him to go see his doctor on this week but i'm praying and thanking god they will be in nothing there in advance god is a healer i also told tyrone i said nothing too hard for god nothing too hard i said god doctor can say one thing but God just had the last wow. test on everything we do. And just hang on in there. He said, you hope call me this morning. He said, Mom, he said, pray. Have the church to pray for me because I know everything will be all right. Tyrone called me. Somebody give God some praise in here. Somebody give God some praise in here. I want a believer to shout somebody. Shout, said, I believe God in here. got to go with this broadcast. We can tear it up right now. So I want, I was going to have three or four people that delivered from cancer, but we can't do it right now. We're going to move on. We got a speaker here, but we want you to know, I want you to know, Sister uh, uh, Minister uh, Joyce Petaway. I prayed for you last week too, that your nephew, Shay, Gaden, I want you to know that God Almighty not only is he able, but he will heal bone cancer in the elbow. Doctors didn't expect him to live this long, and guess what? They didn't expect me to live this long either, but here I am because God is a miracle worker. 
Somebody better believe God and put your hands together. Give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We pray for all these people. We got too many people names to call. We're praying for all of these up here. All of your prayer requests are being prayed for right now. Mother Polly in Buffalo, God bless you. Her son, let me tell you, young people live right. Old people are living longer and younger people are dying now. And I prophesied this a little while back. Listen to me. This young man was at his mother's uh, birthday party, sitting up there strong and healthy. But four days ago, he passed away. Listen. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. There's no God like Jehovah. No God. And he's coming soon. We're praying for those at school for with our dear uh, uh, sister and uh, principal Jackson there. We're praying for all of you, that the parents whose children attend that school and the children. Amen. Now, Lord, in Jesus' name, stretch your hands this way. You got somebody need prayer, you just stretch your hand out. Believe God, get that cell phone if you got to call them and let them hear this prayer. But look at God move in the Jesus of our voice. We thank you, Father, because we're able to come, you said, to the throne of God. Thank you because you're a God of mercy. We come because we stand in your stead. I as your extended hand through this radio, hallelujah. The ears of those that hear in the hearts. We pray. I rebuke Satan right now. Pray for healing. Pray against doubt. Fear. Anxiety. Stress. Insecurity. Then Lord, judging. Jealousy and anger. Hallelujah. And sinning against God that will cause us not to be healed of our diseases. And I ask you to heal physical diseases, mental diseases, spiritual diseases, relational situations at home, families disarrayed. Jesus, heal families. Never have we seen such things happening in families. Heal them. We need you. In Jesus' name. Let your blood cover. Let your healing virtue flow. In Jesus' name. Saints of God, I want you to give a loud thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you know that faith is not reserved for just a few noble people. Faith is for everybody. It's available. Amen. It's available to everybody. Have faith in God. We believe God to bless this preacher. To release his anointing. To cover him right now. To let his wisdom and knowledge and his spirit flow through him. That every person that here in here today will be blessed of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We do admit that we are in an atmosphere of expectancy we do admit that the anointing is here so we release into your hands elder ronald how's my son amen from 17 years old until now thank god for him let's put our hands together and say preach elder preach elder house come on Osha. can we say hallelujah can we say hallelujah again? We give honor to the Most High God. We also give honor to the angels of this house, Bishop Nelson and Elder Nelson. Give honor to Pastor Jamie and his wife. We give honor give honor to my better half, Evangelist Joyce House. Everybody ought to have a better half. Amen. Today, I'd like 
you to turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. I'm going to try to hold myself together because you in Radio Land have no idea the power that's flowing through. The power that's flowing through this place. The anointing and the God anointing that is moving up and down these aisles. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. This is Paul talking. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having come, done all, stand. Having done all, stand. 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 11. Wonderful Savior. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, you do it toward all. Did somebody say all. all. Let somebody else say all. all. All the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. And that you study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands as we commend you. Today, I'd like to use a simple subject. Tighten up. Tighten up. You may be seated. Tighten up. The word tighten up means stop playing. Get it together. Keep your actions in the middle of the road. Your words are not matching your confession. You are acting and talking reckless. Stop it. Stop it. Tighten up. It is now that we are in this last stage before the coming of the Lord. This is not a game. We are at war. We are fighting an enemy who is determined that you are not going to heaven. We are fighting an enemy who is determined with a hatred of God and anything that calls themselves God children. But we have to realize that this enemy has been described as one, his mission is to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy. In other words, the devil said, I want you to know I'm not playing with you. I want you to know that I'm not giving you a second chance. If I get a chance to destroy you, I'm going to destroy you. If I get a chance to break your faith, I'm going to break your faith. 
My comment to the church and the body all over America is to tighten up. Tighten up. We're too loose. We're too complacent. We're at ease. Churches in Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo, all over the place, you're at ease. But I send you this message from heaven on high. Tighten up. Get it together. Paul says that finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I've never seen so many people fainting and falling out and things uh, go wrong and we just deny our faith in God and we're asking how could God do this to me and God know I give my tithe and God know that I come to church. Look at somebody and say stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You got to tighten up. God said how can you embarrass me in front of your enemy and my enemy? How can you allow Satan to sit back and laugh and you saying, where's God? I thought God was going to be there for me. I thought he said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in his might. Not your own. Your might ain't going to get you nowhere. Many of us can tell the story how we thought we could work it out. And how we could fix it. And how we could open the door. And how we could turn our children around. And how we could do this and do that. But only to find out it's not by might and nor by power, but it is by the spirit of the Ketanana, of the living God. Can we shout hallelujah? He said, because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Don't get mad at me. You ain't fighting me. There's a force on the inside that's trying to get you. There's a force behind this flesh and blood that wants you to deny the living God. He said you're not fighting flesh and blood, but you're fighting principalities. You're fighting demons that have been set up to block you. You're fighting demons that's been set up to block your home. You're fighting demons that's been set up and assigned to block your church. You're fighting demons that's been set up and assigned to block you and your children. He said you're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against the rulers of darkness. Satan said, God just moved the heads from Job. Uh -huh, don't let everything turn out beautiful for Job. And Job going to curse you to your face. Uh, he said the rulers of darkness are coming after you like you never dreamed. I'm seeing things now that I've never dreamed that I would see. Never dreamed that I would see. But now, God is saying, I need somebody to tell my church to tighten up. I need somebody to tell my church to be strong. I need somebody to tell my church to cut it out. And I'm not just talking about Bible way, I'm talking about you who name the name of Jesus. Cut it out. Glory. Quit it. You are royal priesthood. You are chosen people. You will be known as God's elect. He said, and then spiritual wickedness in high places. They are devils that are assigned to discourage your faith. A sign to make you call God a liar. A sign when the barrel is low. A sign when things don't go just like you want them to go. They're in high places doing everything they can to touch you and to take you away from the love of God. But Paul saying here that you and I, must pull it together. There's a group of men would come together and they'd talk about breaking out. And they'd talk about what they wanted to do with different people that were in authority. 
and talked about how they were going to do things after midnight. But then those who had their act together, those who realized that only God and God alone can fix it, would walk by. They didn't have to have no long conversation. But they look them right in the eye and they say, tighten up. Tighten up. Get it together. Tighten up. You think your family the only one got problems? Tighten up. You think your children the only one doing stuff you don't like? Tighten up. You think your church is the only one with issues? Tighten up. Shout hallelujah. Tighten up. You don't need nobody to tell you, you so wrong. Ooh, why are you saying that? Just walk past them and say, tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Here now. The Bible talks about First Thessalonians, Paul still talking. And he says, let me tell you about brotherly love. He said, you know that God wants you to love everybody. He said, everybody. You can't have your picks and chooses. I'm so glad I don't talk to a whole lot of folks about anything. My wife will tell you, I go through the house all day. I'm in my prayer closet. I'm somewhere. I don't even talk to the kids some days. You know why? Paul said, I, 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 I'm determined to know nothing among you. Because he said, I need to be able to tell you to tighten up when it's time to tell you to tighten up. So here, he said, you know you're supposed to love everybody. But you got your picks and chooses. You got your picks and chooses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, tighten up. If you can't love everybody and you can't speak to everybody, sit down. Nobody don't want to hear your testimony. Let me tell you something. This place is so this place is so anointed today till this preaching is easy for me. Here, here, here. We'd be riding down the street and somebody blow and I'd blow back. My wife said, who is that? I said, I don't know. But I said, I want them to know if they blew at me, I'm blowing back at you. Some people walk, walk around and won't talk to folks like you hurting somebody. All you showing is how immature you are. All you showing is you don't have it together yet. All you showing is that you need to tighten up. You need to stop playing with yourself. Stop playing with yourself. People come to church, they got real problems. I don't need to come to church and be made to feel even worse after I come to church. And I'm talking all over America. God said it's time that my people get it together. He said these are the last days before the coming of Jehovah. He said, these are the last days and I've got a destiny plan for Bible Way. I've got a destiny plan for you other churches. I've got a destiny plan, but the only way you're going to reach it is you've got to tighten up. Got to get it together. We thank you for listening to Living by Faith broadcast today. If you would like this message in its entirety, write to Dr. Eula M. Nelson Ministries, Post Office Box 39, Henrietta, New York, 14467, or you can call 321-0090. Join Dr. Nelson in service this week. Sunday morning worship begins at 11 a.m., and Miracle and Deliverance services are held Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. All services are held here at the Bible Way Healing Assembly, 4831 West Henrietta Road in Henrietta, New York. For more information or transportation, 
please call 321-0090. And don't forget to write to Dr. Nelson this week. Let us rejoice with you about the great things God has done for your life. When writing, consider sending a love gift to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. This ministry is supported by Dr. Eula M. Nelson Ministries and you, our listening partners. You may send all U.S. mail to E.M. Nelson Ministries, Post Office Box 39, Henrietta, New York, 14467. Until next week, friends, remember the words of Jesus and the gospel according to St. Mark 11 and 22. Have faith in God.